Dynamic geometry is a very powerful feature within Hexagon and it serves two main purposes. The one purpose is for it to be a dynamic history so you can go back and do things that you couldn't do before. As an example you can go back and undo edits and certain tools that you've applied. The second thing that you can do with dynamic geometry is to be able to edit in ways that you couldn't edit your geometry before. So I'm going to be showing you these um, methods very briefly, not in the most detail that can be shown, because this is a brief overview of Hexagon. There are commonly three modes in which we use dynamic geometry, and that is restrictive, full or none. Obviously, when we're working with no dynamic geometry, we're going to be rather limited to what we're going to be able to do with this. So the only data or history that this is going to hold is just a smooth in. Now, when we work in full dynamic geometry, it's going to hold all the available data and history, including any editing that you've done to your geometry and any tools that you wish to undo that you've applied. Restrictive kind of works halfway in between, where it does hold some data, but some of this data automatically gets collapsed when we apply some things like the modifications to objects, including face extrusions, thickness, and chamfers, etc. What I've done here is I've created some simple geometry, and I'm just going to duplicate this geometry and delete any curves that I've got there. And we're going to demonstrate to something very simple with and without dynamic geometry. So first of all, we'll do something with the top one here. Okay, so first of all, no dynamic geometry. What we're going to do is we're going to get this piece of geometry that we've got here now, go to the lines tool, and we're just going to create a simple polyline like that. Now I'm going to just select this geometry here, go to the utilities tab and click on the bend tool and then select this curve. Now you can see that it's bent it, which is great, but that's it. We have no more additional control over this. So that's just validate that and we just close that and we just have the same curve and then select this new piece of geometry here. This time we're going to have full dynamic geometry. So we're going to go to the utilities again, select bend when we have this item selected, select the curve and notice now that we've got some additional constructions within the dynamic geometry. We have the form, which is the item itself. You can see here what it was like before. This means that we can undo the actual bend itself if we wanted to. We can collapse this. In addition to this, we can actually edit the curve. So if we were to select, say, this vertice here, it would actually edit this curve. Bearing in mind that this curve is the actual beginning curve there. Let's select this one. Maybe this one there. Okay, so you can see what we can do. It's almost like a, a joint or a bone. We select the face, we go to the vertex modeling and then we do a few sweeps. Now we've got the full dynamic geometry mode on, we're just going to create a few of these. And then we'll just click validate. Now what you're left with now is a spline curve right in the center of this. And we can select this curve in the dynamic geometry I've just done now. And we can select these individual vertices points and then actually modify these. And what this will do is it will automatically modify the actual geometry. You can see there. In addition, we don't have to specifically leave that spline curve inside the actual model. We can move it out. And we can edit it. Also what we can do is we can slice up this curve. And it automatically creates a slice in the geometry. We can then go and select that specific point and then edit that all in real time. 
And this is something that you can't do if you don't have dynamic geometry enabled. Now let's just go back and we say we don't want that. That's great. Let's just collapse this. We'll remove this. And now we're left with the original geometry because we've actually got this construction history that we had in the dynamic geometry. So we could go right back to the initial model before we edited it. 